So I have you- a question. Okay. And, and I, I feel like I used to know the answer to this, but based on what you just said, I'm not 100% sure anymore. Can you have both an IEP and a 504? Should you have both an IEP and a 504? I think, you know, from my research, you could, but I don't think you should. Okay. I think if, I think if, you, if you have an IEP, that should be the focus. Because okay. even if you don't have a 504 plan, if the district discriminates against you on the basis of your disability, you can sue under 504 okay. for more damages. You don't have to have a 504 plan to enforce your 504 plan rights. Um, and and a further question, sorry, I don't mean to throw you off your rhythm, but it sounds like to me, Bonnie, that your preference for a school-aged individual on the autism spectrum, if possible, is to have an IEP, um, but that, you know, sometimes schools don't, they give uh, a child a 504, um, but your preference as a lawyer, a special education lawyer, it sounds like it's a little bit more, um, I don't, it's not ac- access, but you have more, more actionable if you have an IEP, is that well, no, not not necessarily, because if you have if you have disability discrimination that violates Section 504, it's very actionable. It's not that it's not actionable, but okay. we'll come back to we'll come back to what's required because one of the problems with 504 is you have to exhaust your administrative remedies, which means you have to go to you have to go to hearing first administratively and exhaust your 504 claims before you can. Uh, sue in court but but we've talked about on this show the fact that there's a difference between educational impact under the idea and academic impact and school districts have tried to define educational impact which is what's in the statute narrowly so that they didn't have to you know provide somebody with an iep um if they were you know let's say um if they had at least average cognition and they, you know, they, they could sort of do the work. But what we looked at also is that when you do the initial assessment for IDEA eligibility, you don't just look at academic ability. You look at social, emotional, and, 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 and these other things. And the reason for looking at those things is because once you turn 18, if you have an IEP, you become, responsible for your own educational rights and you are supposed to have a transition plan that prepares you for adult employment and if you aren't able to uh, observe the normal social routines it's going to be hard for you to move on in your life as an adult who had an IEP and is now in charge of your education and or working for a living. So we know that the test is educational impact Um, requiring special education and related services, but we also watch as the districts over and over again try to define uh, educational impact very narrowly, which is how they kick kids with autism off of their IEPs, okay? So like you have a very bright student with autism who uh, is, is getting some of the best grades in the class, but when he goes out to the play yard, all he can talk about is uh, angry birds, and his peers are shunning him because he's not picking up on the fact that everybody has reciprocal conversation and he doesn't. So that's how you get an IEP. You have one of the 13 qualifying disabilities, and you have to require specialized instruction um, to learn in the general ed setting. Whereas with a 504 plan, there are two requirements. One, you have to have a disability, but it's way broader than the 13 disabilities. You know, uh, you could have asthma. Well, asthma is covered under the IDA. It's way broader than 13 disabilities. Although, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of conditions would fit under other health impairment because that's, that's a catch-all category for the IDEA. A lot of mental health um, categories would fit under the IDA, under emotional disturbance. But anyway, the Section 504 has a broader definition of disability, and the disability must interfere with the child's ability to learn in the general education classroom. 
So the 504 language says the disability must substantially limit one or more basic life activities. This can include learning, reading, communicating, and thinking. That's why a child who doesn't qualify for an IEP still might be able to get a 504 for them. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.